Welcome, everyone, to Where the Water Tastes Like Wine. You're here with Round the Fever, otherwise known as Trax Craven, when I have no idea what this game is about. Um, Night has fallen, and you're weary from travel. Stars fill the sky above, and in front of you is a brightly lit wooden house, the only building you've seen for days. Uh, the uh, creator of Kingdom of Loathing, um, one Mr. Zach Jick Johnson, talks a lot. Has spoken a lot about this game for a few years. Uh, apparently, got caught in development limbo and then bailed out by a sweet publisher. And here it is. Uh, so uh, it's got I've got praises sung. Let's begin. Go to the house. You walk toward the house. Hearing the sounds of laughter and talk as you reach the door and push it open. Got it. Pardon me while I enter. Hmm, I appear to be a rough hewn gentleman. Is it just me or does that guy seem to have you some. You sit down and join the game. It's a cheap buy in. And not many of the other players are very good. This gentleman, I don't know if he just has long hair or a particularly wolfish expression. The lady fiddling with dice gets good cards, but has no real strategy. The man to your right seems to just hold on to the highest cards he has, regardless of suit or any consideration of matches. Who else is here? The man in gray across from you, though. He's good. He already had the largest pile of coins when you bought in. And while your winnings grow quickly, you can't quite catch him. I do love a challenge. Let's keep playing. One by one, the other players leave the table. Sometimes with peak or with wry humor, leaving their winnings with you or the man in gray. Keep playing. What is that? Some sort of razor? Potato peeler? A key? To what? Oh my. Finally, it's just you and the man in gray. He looks at you, full of humor and winks. Last hand? I like how winks is some sort of like dialogue descriptor, because that's totally a thing. I'm in. He deals, you draw. And look at your hand. It's good. It's great. The best hand, in fact. A royal straight flush. Spades. Aces high. Nothing can defeat me now. But the man in gray pushes forward his whole pile. You're not sure exactly how much it is. But it's more than you've got. You can't match that. Fold? That's not. Is, is that how things work? I'm pretty sure you can press forward. At that point, if you lose, you just owe that person. Or the perhaps. The man in gray stops you. Now, if you like, I'll let you wager your word. I know you'll be good for it. Just promise you'll pay the debt. However, I ask. Okay, when you put it that way, I get a little spooked. Let me just check my cards one more time. Yep. Ten jack. Queen, King, Ace. All spades. Whatever you say, Mr. Gray, you have my word. The man in gray smiles. All right, then. I'll call. Read them and weep. What? No, don't do that. Faust would, Faust would be very disappointed. Wait. What? How the... What? What in the fuck? Oh no! What is this game? Direwolf, Chapter 1 Well, your luck wasn't so good, was it? That's quite the hand, but not for the game we're playing. <laughs> I'm afraid you owe me. Your life, sure. But more than that, your labor 
You sound like a filthy capitalist, Mr. Wolf, but let's see what you want. You see, this land is built on stories. It's one big story, this country, woven of many small ones. Few of the small ones are strictly true, and the big story is mostly a lie. Sounds about right. All the stories and songs and myths and legends start somewhere with a seed. As they're told and retold and passed around, they grow and change to become the stories we know. All right. To pay your debt to me, you'll be carrying stories, finding the seeds first and then spreading them, telling them onwards so they can begin gaining strength. This is no light task. Stories are heavy. What in the fuck is this game, man? Most of the stories you'll find will be small seeds. They might be true, but they grow wild and unbelievable with the telling. Makes sense. You could prune and shear that. You could prune and shear that bush all day, but it's gonna grow wild and woolly. The more important stories are the true ones. The ones people will tell you about their own lives. Those often get lost in the weaves of the big story. Got it. The more true stories you can find and tell, the more you can weave that truth into the big story. Tarnish it a bit, perhaps, but isn't a dingy and battered truth better than a shining lie? I would certainly say so. Now, go ahead. You tell me a story. I'll trade you some information about your task. Okay. Oh. Three of staves. Travel. Justice. Choice and morality. The world. Heaven desires fulfilled. Wishes come true. Wheel of fortune. Fortune, fate, and luck. The tower. Death, change, endings. Moving on. Let's begin there, shall we? Tell the story of a black and gray city where every building is filled with desiccated corpses. I'll strip away your flesh to make the journey easier, but still you'll feel pain. How does that work? I don't think that helps. Hunger, weariness, thirst, and despair. They're all part of stories. The part not often told. True facts. Nobody likes to talk about the hero at their worst. For some reason. And death, yes. But don't worry. As long as your task remains, you come back. Small blessings, I suppose. Um... I do like justice. Tell the story of the endless series of doors of different kinds, each leading only to more doors. You sometimes have to make choices about what kind of story you're finding. Is it a love story? Or a tragedy? Right. Don't gather too many of one kind, though. This grand story needs variety. Of course, of course. Uh, travel. Tell the story of the northbound train blinking its giant eyes it crawls through the night. Travel? Hell yeah. That's your job. Wander from place to place, gather those stories, and spread them. Okay. Alright. People get bored hearing the same stories over and over. But an old cliche in one state might be a rip roaring new yarn in another. Fair point. Uh, as what could be considered old hat in another country brought to here. Uh, is something all new and innovative. All right, all right, I can dig it, I can dig it. Let's talk about some fortune. Tell the story of tossing a pair of bone dice on a blood red velvet table. They came up snake eyes and they wonk at you. It's just luck. Funny how bad luck seems to follow the folks who already have problems aplenty. It is funny how that works, isn't it, Mr. Man in Gray? Well, Try your luck out there in this country. See how the dice treat you. Okay. So what we're doing will involve a lot of travel. Uh, 
will want a variety of stories. We're going to get super fucked up, and sometimes things will work out, and sometimes things won't. Don't take it too hard. It's not all bad. You'll have to work hard, but I'll give you the gift for seeing the true shapes of people. Is that why you look like a wolf, Mr. Man in Grey? Not many who can do that. True enough. And let's finish with the world. Tell the story of the parting of a cloud of fog to reveal a brief glimpse of a land of promise and plenty. Your deepest desires, your greatest wish, heaven, big rock candy mountain, hey. El Dorado, the promised land, that place just over the ridge where they all say that the water tastes just like the sweetest wine. That sounds nice. Well, I don't know where that is. Somehow reassuring. It's supposed to be somewhere in this country. Ask the people you meet. Very well, then. They're all searching for the same thing. Go on your way, seeker. Maybe we'll meet again, or maybe not. Hmm. Either way, it'll be an experience for you. Small blessings, I guess. I'm jealous in some ways. Oh. Really? I hope you find what you're looking for. Thanks. I am a skeleton with a bindle. I guess I may as well follow this road. Don't know exactly where else to go. There's something floating over this here house. Search? This bungalow is being ransacked. There's furniture piled in the front yard, ammunition heaped under the mailbox, and a crowd of clean-cut men ripping apart a car in the driveway. Strange. The two heavily armed, mud-caked women leaning over the porch railing share the same bored grin. One shouts at you. Lend a couple innocent gals a cigarette? What? <laughs> What the hell voice is that? All right, fine. Sure. You are about to hand her a smoke when those men draw pistols and shove you hard into the dirt. You know these girls? They demand. Can't say that I do, but if someone asks me for a cigarette, I'm going to give it to them no matter what. Yeah, everyone deserves a cigarette. Once they've dumped your bag out into the road, they decide you're harmless. If you were selling booze, too, you'd have a lot more cash sneers one on the porch behind him the two bootleggers are fingering their empty rifles grinning in disappointment huh i'm a little confused so wait who are the women who are the bootleggers who are the men oh well i'll move on the women arrested for bootlegging okay okay so those women were arrested for bootlegging the house is being ransacked by lawmen. Okay, alright, this all makes sense now. Uh, uh, uh. The map is a little hard to control. For the camera at the very least. Okay. It appears if I... Oh god, what? 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 Please calm down. I don't know what I did, but I swear I'll never do it again. Uh... Trust me, I'm getting that on my end, and I'm not sure exactly what's costing it. Alright, what do we got here? More stories, I assume? Off the road and into the woods, you can't help but come across this package by the old tree tied to a sturdy stick. The cloth wrapping conceals, though not particularly well, something large and softly unsettled. Little eyes blink back at you from inside the bundle. Uh, hello? The shape gives a start. Please don't tell my pa that I'm in here. It says in a small voice. Why shouldn't I do that, little one? Pa doesn't want to live with us anymore. But I want to go with him. Don't tell him, please. I'm hiding. Ah. Uh, oh, jeez. I don't know, I don't know what your pa's like, little one. But you probably shouldn't be out here all alone. Sorry, kiddo, I'm gonna look for your dad. If it turns out that... Ow, oh, jeez. His father must have been here at some point. 
but you sure can't see him now. Please go. He's coming back any minute, says the boy, growing agitated. He's going to see you talking to me. Please, go! He only calms down when you leave. You don't see another soul for miles. Huh. Well, let's move on. The boy who ran away with his father. Okay. Okay, I'm in Maine. How far can I go? Because that's the border between Maine and New Hampshire. Which means that must have been the way to Canada. What? How big is this game? What have I gotten myself into? Well, geez, coming home, ain't I? What do we have? They don't here? come every year, you know. The old man is sitting at the edge of a rotting old pier, crooked legs dangling over the water. He watches a pair of seagulls preen and groom each other on a rock just off the shore. Why is that, old man? Just when the fishing is going to be good. He taps great, black, thick globs of spent tobacco out of a huge ceramic pipe. I got another year, I guess. One more year of what? I assume he means good fishing. Another year of this town being here, he replies, letting a grin spread across his face. If the seagulls came, that means enough fish to keep it in place. Thanks, old man. New story of the seagulls and the fishermen. A woman walks the small town square with the poise of Betty Davis. A confident stride and inimitable mannerisms elevating the sidewalk into a plush Hollywood carpet. And wrapped around her neck, a yellow velvet ribbon, bright as an ocean sunrise. Wow. Um, striking, to be sure. Ask around? You question a well-dressed man parked outside an oyster house. Prudish woman. I took her on a fine date, and she didn't remove so much as a ribbon. Excuse me, can you step back from the coop? That's the spirit. You decide to seek a second opinion. Agreed. You talk with a waitress smoking outside a diner. Something funny about her. Just showed up one day. Doesn't work, doesn't live anywhere as far as I know. Just around. Myself, I'd love to know who made all her beautiful clothes. Hmm. An aggressive pro- oh geez. Why is it- why is it- Why is it a symbol of tragedy? You ask the woman if you may join her at a public bench. You may. Lovely outside, isn't it? Her eyes are a beautiful shade of brown. Beneath the yellow ribbon, a thick, fibrous scar wraps around her throat. Was I like this? It reminds me of Paris. Move on, I guess. The elegant woman of the small town. To the lighthouse, I guess. You can see storm clouds on the horizon, and you don't relish the thought of being caught wandering this rocky seaside road in the rain. Fortunately, you find the lighthouse door open with a daunting staircase before you. Climb, ascend! At the top of an ornate wrought iron spiral, you're breathless and feeling the strain on your knees. Rain already batters the walls outside. You can only knock on a heavy wooden door leading into the upper level. Muffled voices and light seep in beneath the door. I'll put my ear to that door. Looks like we got a visitor. Sounds like a man's voice, deep and rough. Well, behave yourself. I'll open the door. Another man. This one with a higher, more sonorous voice. I always behave myself. 
He feigns indignation, but his tone betrays affection instead. Wow, this voice acting is really good, because I, I don't know, I could hear all that. I'll wait. After a moment, the door unlatches from the inside and opens. The man before you is tall and muscular, with a hint of a paunch beneath his wide chest. The heavy iron knob on the door looks nearly dainty in his huge hand. Didn't want to be out in this rain, did you? Come in. I'll step inside, thank you. Despite the rough exterior, this room looks like a well-appointed parlor. There's a rug on the well-trod wooden floor and an enormously plush couch. And sat upon it is a stocky fellow grinning through a great hazel-colored beard. Tea? He offers, hoisting a teapot. Thank you very much. Must be lonely up here? Well, you two seem to have each other. Ooh. So this seems to lead toward affection, and this leads to something else. A smiling sun? Uh, it must be lonely up here. I'd, I'd rather keep the tone, Amorous. Oh, we manage. The tall one sits on the sofa, casually wrapping an arm around the other lighthouse keeper. The quiet suits us just fine. He needs his quiet time. He's a writer. The tall one grunts. I dabble, but you must have some good stories from the road. I, well, I have some. You wake up the next morning on their old sofa, still warm from an excess of tea and cakes. There might have been little cakes. Prodigious snoring rumbles in from the floor above you, and you quietly take your leave. I'll move on. New story of the two lighthouse keepers. All right. That'll do for this first episode of Where the Water Tastes Like Wine. If you liked what you saw, hold cue to hitchhike. Next time on Where the Water Tastes Like Wine, we're going to fucking hitchhike. But until then, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you all had a fantastic evening. If you liked what you saw, I'd like. If you want to continue the adventure, please hit subscribe. And uh, if you think that what I do is really keen, you can send me a couple bucks monthly on Patreon, and I can use that money to do fantastic, amazing things like make more videos, start streaming, hire an artist to do cool shit, do the coolest thing I can think of. Hitchhike, motherfucker. Thumbs out, guns out. Whee!